Hello everyone, and for the first time in a little bit, welcome back to Dead by Daylight, the board game. I haven't played it in a little while because it's not been super popular. People were getting a bit sick of me playing it so much, so I'm just going to intersperse it now and then when I feel like it. Just do a game here and there. And I didn't find the time to paint up the Oni, but I did literally just find the time to finish painting the Trickster who is the killer we're going to see today, and I do mean like literally just finish them, the, the paint will still be wet. So we're going to see how they perform today, they will work with the solo mode rules that we're using, just as a reminder if you're jumping in here, we're using solo mode rules, that means some of the rules do not apply, go back to the start of the series if you want more specifics. Anyway, let's go look at the trickster. So here is the trickster's model I'm being very careful with because I'm, I'm not exaggerating, some of the paint will still be wet. I'll talk about them in the next getting stuff painted. Just making sure I've not got anything on my fingers, there we go. So I never played as trickster, they were added long after I stopped playing the video game. But I have seen them be played, I know they're all about the throwing knives, hence the gigantic stack of throwing knives that we get to play with as part of his power. He's rated as hard difficulty and his power is showstopper. Each survivor in your space and a connected space gains a knife. That's why you get so many tokens, he can actually give out quite a lot. His passive, survivor's maximum blood points decreased by two for each knife they have. That's not going to be relevant in solo mode, but it doesn't really matter. Survivors discard any blood points beyond their new maximum. After a survivor interacts with a locker, they discard all knives attached to them. So that's how they get rid of the status effect. If a survivor would gain a, uh, rather when they gain their third knife, they get wounded and it does nothing if they're already wounded. But, if they would gain a fourth knife, you get sacrifice progress. So that's an alternative way to get sacrifice progress. So the trickster doesn't actually need to be putting them on hooks if he's just chucking knives everywhere, which is kind of cool. It's an interesting way to play. A survivor with three knives cannot become healthy as well. I'm trying to remember that part. They can't be healed unless you get rid of the knives. So that means if you are using the AI, remember the AI does prioritize winning. So if it looks like the killer is going to win from them having too many knives, they will prioritize going in a locker. You just have to kind of play that by ear. Passive, spend one on no way out. When a survivor with fewer blood points than you would interact with the generator or exit, you prevent the action from happening. Crowd control at the start of the planning phase. Choose a survivor. The survivor survivors must collectively pay two blood points. Otherwise, you select what movement card they're going to place. And then two for Starstruck. When you would pick up a survivor, move along any path and pick up a different survivor instead. They do not need to be wounded. That is that is very powerful. Alright, this is going to be interesting. Um, I'll get everything set up, randomise where they start as always, like you're supposed to. And we'll be back after this quick word from my channel sponsor. This video is sponsored by Noble Knight Games. Check out the video description below for an affiliate link that will take you through to their store and it will help me out as well. Thanks. So we're back and for whatever reason I guess I have moved around the lights a little bit. Instead of the rectangle in the bottom right of the board being super shiny, we now have a pyramid of shiny. That's an improvement, maybe? Either way, Randomize Who started where, I forgot to go over the survivors but obviously you saw who it was. It was our new usual which is Dwight, Jake, Meg and Nia. So I have started down the bottom left of your screen here in the ruins. Oh yeah, we're at the Crotus Prent Asylum by the way. Nia has also started there, so danger close. Meg has started up in the shack at the top left, and then Dwight and Jake are over at the carnival entrance. I guess maybe they were on a date, who knows. So that is where everyone is starting, uh, and I'll try and keep things right, but again, keep in mind it's been a little bit since we've last played, and it's just for fun when you're playing solo anyway. Well, danger close down here for Nia, so we're going to randomly move her first. She can only leave via red or blue, so I have a 50-50 chance of chasing her. And she's going blue, so my 50-50 has not worked out. Spoilers. So that puts her in what was previously shiny corner, although I think it, yeah, if I move the camera, oh, it's not as bad, actually. She's down here. The AI will always spin over tokens that are most beneficial from left to right. She has found the first of many generators, and she'll try and fix it. That's her action, and she does. Just a single point, though. And then that conveniently means we can just go straight to Jake and Dwight. Or Dwight and Jake, because I just go left to right usually. So Dwight first. Green? No, it's blocked off. Blue? A lot of blue. So he's going to come here. Flip this. It is another generator. I still haven't painted up the generators. They're kind of low priority. And he has fixed one progress Oops, on the generator. Now, if Jake follows him, there's a non-zero chance they just instantly repair. 
Oh, there's my dog trying to get past the camera. Yes, she is. She doesn't like the tripod. I'll move it in a second. Oh, no, no, she made it past. Okay. Green, nope. Red, yes. That puts Jake up in the courtyard, top left, uh, top right rather. He found a generator as well. Not super surprising, obviously, given there's only two exits. And he did fix it. So, one progress on that generator. And then finally, other end of the board, we're coming around here. Top left, shut up, Meg. Let's see where she's going. Green? Nope, it's red or blue all over. I want her to get blue, so of course she doesn't. Well, that puts her danger close to me, but I did not pick a weight card, so she is perfectly safe. Although, actually, no, she's not, because she's in an adjacent place to where I'm going to end up. So I might just throw a knife at her for fun. Who knows? Uh, where's my die? There it is. She'll try and repair it. And she does. Four generators discovered. Four generators with one progress after first survivor turn. So my first action was red, unfortunately, so we can't chase Nia. Uh, that's just going to send us up this path. I'm going to flip the one of the two red tokens that are up here. Hopefully finding a hook, because we are going to need them probably. So there's a hook. And for my actual action for that turn, I'm going to throw a throwing knife. You hit your space and connected spaces. Which means this little baby is going into Meg's back. And I'll just pile them up on the card so they won't be seen on screen. Well, they are currently, but probably won't be in general. I'm keeping track of them there, though, just so you know. And then my other action was blue. I was just following the path along. And that means the trickster is coming over here. We're going to flip the red token. Hope it's another hook. It's a hex totem. And I think we're going to throw more throwing knives. Like That's this guy's whole thing, right? So... Yeah, we're going to chuck more throwing knives, and that means a throwing knife is stabbing Jake in the back. So that is one on him as well. And we just want to try and build them up as much as possible. Survivors wouldn't prioritise getting rid of them until they're close to getting the third, I would just say, if, if you're using this solo mode AI, because that's the point at which I might start costing them. Turn two, my cards are down, and I'm really interested where Jake goes, because that will dictate whether or not I'm going to do some nasty stuff this turn. So let's see where he's going. Vaulting, nope, it's in the other direction, he can't take that, or the other one, there's actually two yellow connected there. He's going back to the carnival entrance, you lucky so-and-so, and he has found one of the exits. Nothing to interact with that round though, so he is done. And now we have to awkwardly come down here where the triangle of light dwells and move Nia, hopefully out of there. Green, nope, blocked off. Blue, back the way she came, she will flip this token and she's found an item but she's going to prioritize winning which means she's going to try and finish that generator and if she gets a crit she is no crit but that's two out of three and then since we're down here let's move Meg yellow nope has to be blue or red this is I remember this is the map where blue and red is like all your movement cards so she's up to the shank where there's now a hook and she's found the other exit. There's nothing for her to interact with there, so she's just done. Is that everyone? Did I move Dwight? I think I did, right? Because Did I move Dwight? No, I moved Jake, then I moved Nia, then I moved Meg. No, Dwight has not moved. I'm sorry, Dwight. I forgot you were there. So let's move him. He can actually move green. Oh yeah, the, the green is like a, a central square in this map. Yellow. He can go yellow. He vaults down to the courtyard in the top right. And he's going to try and fix that gen after flipping a token. He found another item. It's good for me that they found no lockers yet. And he did repair the gen. So that wasn't as effective a turn as last time. But two gens are at two out of three progress. So my first card this time was weight. And I'm glad I did because we're going to hand out some knives. I'm going to chuck knives in all directions, Death Blossom style. Die, die, die. Meg gets hit by one over here, and Dwight gets hit by one over there. So that's Dwight's first knife, but that's Meg's second. And it's at three that she becomes wounded, and they can't heal. So that's really good. Uh, my next card I think was red, unfortunately. I don't think I did blue. Yeah, it's such a shame. Ah, now that's an interesting little quandary, because... There's a, a blocked path. Whoops, if we just come over here, I accidentally knocked over a gen there. Come over here. See, these are connected, but it's currently blocked. So I'm curious if that stops the power. Hmm. Well, first of all, we moved here, so I have to flip something. We found a hook. 
I'm going to take a quick look at the rules because it is important because if I hit Meg with another knife, that's her wounded. And she has to find a locker because she can't get healed. So that would be, that. that's probably, my, there's nothing else I can do. I'm going to take a quick look how it words what these do, like if they stop killer powers. I'm not seeing anything in the rules for either survivor or killer that says that the power would not work through it. For the killers it just says when a killer moves along a path with a breakable wall you remove it and now everybody can move the path as normal. And for survivors it just says survivors cannot interact with breakable walls under normal circumstances. If they attempt to move along a path with a breakable wall it just causes them to end their turn. So I don't know, maybe like... Maybe this has been FEQ'd, I don't know, but as, as far as I can tell, the way it reads, he's chucking a knife over the wall, or around the wall, and yeah, he's going to hit her. So that is her third knife stabbed somewhere in her person, and that means she gets automatically wounded, just like that, and she cannot be healed unless she gets rid of those knives inside her. Start of turn three, and let's go with Meg, because she's the one in the most clear and present danger. She is moving blue, and I will tell you in advance that is bad for her. She's obviously finding a generator, because they found both exits. So she's just going to try and repair that gen, and she does. They haven't failed a single roll yet. They haven't had any crits, but they haven't failed either. Let's go bottom left now, just because it's easier for me to move the tripod down here, and we'll move Nia red so she's going right back up there and she will search this and she has found an item and I guess it would behoove her to take an item and even if she finds a med kit that can't help Meg she literally cannot be healed unless she finds a locker to hide in first I don't know if that's how the knife mechanic works in the video game I've, I've taken an item card at random discard this at any time to allow any survivor to do a reroll so if, if they are about to get a fail they now have just a global reroll once, so that's kind of perfect for them, honestly. And let's see if they have to use it immediately with what Jake or Dwight does. Let's start with Dwight. He's moving blue. He has to flip something, so he'll flip this. Ah, he's found a locker. He doesn't need to go in it. Meg does, who happens to be there, but they don't have a weight card, so that doesn't help her. He's going to try and repair that gen. He does barely misses out on a crit. But that gen is at 2 out of 3 now as well. And then finally Jake, who you can just make out at the bottom right of your screen there. He's around a lot of generators, so it doesn't really matter where he moves. He's going to try and repair one. Oh, he can't go green. Sorry, that's blocked off. Can't go yellow. Blue. Yes. Blue. Here. Put this. He's found another locker, so that might help Meg. And he's going to try and repair that gen. And if he gets a crit, he does. He did not get a crit, but he got a success. They're being very efficient, but they're they're being slow, methodical, I guess is the polite way to say it. My first action for this round was move red. I actually have two choices here, which is interesting. Now let's see, because if I move through here, yes, this path is now open to the survivors, but for my action, I could hit. No, I don't need to hit Nia. I could stab. I could throw knives. If I throw knives, Dwight gets his second knife, Meg gets her fourth, which would be sacrifice progress. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to move red, but I'm going to smash this wall. And we're going to say, oh yeah, I have to flip something, so we'll flip the other red token. <laughs> there's two hooks up here, which is just odd, but hey, there's two hooks. And yeah, I'm going to choose to throw knives. So Nia gets her first knife, stab. Dwight gets his second knife, and then, as I say, I don't think she actually gets the fourth, though. If a survivor would gain a fourth knife, yeah. So she doesn't actually get the fourth knife stuck in. But, that gives me my first progress towards winning, as another knife hits Meg in the back of the head, I guess. And I still get another action, so what was my other action? I wish I'd picked weight. Can you imagine if I picked weight? But I don't think I did. I believe it was blue. Although that still works, actually. Yeah, I picked blue. So I have to come over here, I have to flip something, so I have to flip this green, it's a bird. Now then, let me just think this through again. Throwing knives is still the best option here, but it's, it's just too good. Like yes, I could carry Meg to a hook, but why bother? Throwing the knife into her just gives me progress. And yeah, I'm throwing knives again. So Meg would gain a fourth knife again, so again sacrifice progress. Dwight gains his third, so he now can't be healed, and he's wounded. Until he gets in a locker. 
and the closest locker is on them so they can't use it this turn and Nia gets her second knife so she's one away from that that's really good okay now we're starting to pick up momentum here so it's a new turn for the survivors I'm spoiling in advance what my cards are it's the exact same turn reversed so let's see how that works out uh, let's move Meg first she would love to stay there but survivors don't have a weight card so they're not allowed although she might be about to find a locker down here let's see Oh, she did. Well, she's prioritized. Oh, wait, no, they have to prioritize. There's still a yellow token here. Whoops. So she has to prioritize doing the gen. So actually, well, now we know there's a locker there, which is knowledge we shouldn't really have, but I, I didn't spot it there on the left of the, the hook. I just realized neither can you because I didn't quite move the camera. There was a yellow token there. It was a slightly obscured, so I didn't see it. So she's repairing the gen. And she does. That's, I keep on knocking the generator over that's right at the bottom of the board here. Unfortunately, the antenna on it is too large or whatever it is. Well, that means though, if Dwight goes down there, he can get rid of his knives. Blue. He has to go blue. Uh, there's not a locker on the left and there's an exit. If he goes to the right side blue, he finishes a gen as long as he doesn't roll a fail twice because they can use that key to reroll. And he actually rolled the first crit of the game when it wasn't necessary. So that's them achieved, one out of four gens done. Simple as that, let's do Jake next. Down here, he's also at a locker, but he is safe, he's only got the one knife in him. Green, he has a choice of where to go for green, they wanna prioritize winning green over here because there will definitely be a generator. Right there, there is one generator left on the map, to find that is, uh, where's the die, there it is. Ooh, well, there goes the key. Key used to re-roll a fail. Oh, into a fail. I'll take that blood point. Thank you very much. I'll get that in a second. I'll just put that there to remind me. And let's finish off the survivor round by moving Nia, who has two knives in her. Yes. So she's close to being wounded. Yellow. Nope, has to be red or blue. She's going blue. You're going to wish you didn't. Oh, well... Now this is an interesting thing, this is where you're just going to have to kind of play by ear. Does she hide in the locker to get rid of her wounds or does she finish the gen? The answer is she finishes the gen. Like, you, you prioritise the fastest way to win rather than personal safety. So, yep, she did. So that's, suddenly, the survivors are halfway to winning. But, I'm, I'm getting momentum now. Oh, just as a note, I absolutely could have spent one blood point for No Way Out to literally stop that action happening. But because we're playing solo mode and the survivors never have blood points, I feel like that wouldn't be fair. So I'm choosing not to. You could absolutely still play with that rule. The survivors are always going to have less blood points than you. It feels a bit too powerful to me, so I'm not going to do it. But just so it's on camera, letting you know. So as I believe I already mentioned, my turn this time around is the reverse of last time. Last time it was red then blue to th today. This time, this turn, it is blue then red. Case in point. So, I'm trying to work out how do I get the most bang for my buck here. If I go, because there's two blue options. I can go left and, or I can chase after Dwight. Dwight's got three knives in him. Hmm. Meg still has three knives in her. Nia has two. If I move here, I get the third knife in Nia and I get sacrifice progress because Meg is adjacent. For chucking a knife, I mean. After that, I move blue. I can move back here. Oh, absolutely. Yep, 100%. Oh, wait, no, I can't go back there. No, the red isn't connected. Oh, that would have been so good. Oh, you know what I could do? Yep, there's still a way to make it happen. I can buy an extra killer turn since I haven't been spending my blood points. Yep, well, yeah, yeah, okay, got it. <laughs> We're going blue. We're coming over here. I have to flip something. There's just the green token. It's a bird, so be it. I'm throwing, throwing knives. One sacrifice progress for hitting Meg again. And that's Nia with her third knife. So she now becomes wounded. And then this is where the, the forehead plays begin. I, I, if I can win without ever having to put someone on a hook, that would be amazing. So, moving red, I actually have two options, but I'm absolutely coming down here to where Meg is. I'm throwing, throwing knives again. I'm hitting Nia and Meg, who both have three. That's two more sacrifice progress. Boom, boom. And then, I am spending four of my five blood points. I had five because they failed a roll. To buy an extra killer turn. 
and I am playing my green card because I played blue then red. I'm coming over here. I'm going to flip this. Hey, look, it's a locker, that thing they need. And I'm throwing throwing knives again, and it hits Meg, Nia, if you go by the wall here, which we are, because I'm just going to play it that way this time, and Dwight, all of whom have three, meaning I gain three sacrifice tokens and win. Just like that. That is, without ever hooking a survivor, that is all eight right there from that just fan of knives attack. Now, granted... If there has been some online errata or whatever, like killer powers don't work through this, maybe I just didn't see it. I only read the rules for the breakable walls, it's possibly said elsewhere in the rulebook. That would mean there'd be another turn. The survivors literally can't win in one turn, even if they finished all the generators, because they literally don't have enough activations to then also open up the door and get to the door. So I would still have won on the next turn with so many of them hurt, even if they started jumping in lockers. Because at best, because it's one survivor per locker, so yeah, Meg could hide in that locker, Dwight could hide in that locker, Neo would still be accessible, so yeah, there would, there'd be no way to stop me doing it in another turn anyway. So yeah, that is going to be a win right there. So pretty powerful for showing for the Trickster on the channel, we'll definitely see them again sometime in the future, that was a very fun playstyle, you don't even need to use the hooks. And there isn't any criteria like it only applies once per turn or anything. It's just if a survivor would gain a fourth knife, gain sacrifice progress instead. I'm surprised it doesn't say and then remove a knife or something like that. I feel like that would balance it more, but this is clearly a momentum killer. So you kind of need it because the survivors will have a lot of progress done by the time you build up those knives. But yeah, getting a few like double or triple hits in a single action, super good. Um, I would probably say to be fair, make it the you don't throw knives through the blocked passages. Obviously in the video game there's like, there's windows and ledge high, or knee high ledges and stuff. So you technically could throw knives over them. But for the spirit of the game I imagine you're probably not supposed to. And as I say it wouldn't have affected the win in this instance. But for future reference that's probably the way to play it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this somewhat brief return to Dead by Daylight with a brand new killer. Very interesting. It's a shame my model is slightly damaged. The whatever the mace thing he uses is all bent and twisted, but that's fine. It's a cool miniature. I, I wanted to paint this one instead of it only just because of the weird color scheme. It's like such a different color scheme to the rest of the game. And I'll talk about it more in a getting stuff painted, as I said. Thank you for watching. Either way, if you do want to see more, please do show your support. And you can do that in a free way, just with a like or a comment. And if you can spare anything to support the channel, I greatly appreciate it. Um, if you press the thanks button, become a channel member, which lets you get access to videos early, or check out the channel sponsor. Anything you buy via the affiliate link means I also get compensated. Thank you for watching either way though. Enjoy your day, and I shall see you next time. Ta-ta for now.